Good morning. So as I mentioned in a recent video, it's pretty quiet on the wildlife front at the moment. There's not a great deal goes on this time of year. Um, and I think as I mentioned previously, it's quite hard to find birds and things because they're all stuck up in the foliage in the trees and it's very difficult to see. So this morning I got up, looked at the weather forecast. Um, nice calm day, uh, overcast and no rain. So I thought to myself, it's time to get that macro lens out. So here we are. We've got the R5 with the Canon 100mm macro lens on it. I'm going to see what we can do with macro now. I'm not great. I'm not good at macro. I find it quite hard. I've watched a few videos of different people who make it look really easy. Uh, I think I watched one of Morton Hilmer recently and he just made it look so easy. So, but I'm going to give it a go. The problem I've got at the moment is I checked two weather forecast apps. I checked the rain radars. I checked everything. No rain, as I say, calm day, nice and still. And overcast, so no, too, no bright shadows on the, on the macro shots, which was pretty good. Got here, it's raining. I mean, it's raining before it even started. You know, it said no rain. There was no rain on the radar. There was no rain on the weather apps. <sighs> but it's raining. So, but it's not too bad. It's only, only a bit of light drizzle. And hopefully, I'm hoping it's gonna stop. Um, uh, and you know, make things a bit more comfortable. But it's not not a major if it doesn't. You know, we can still do a few bits, uh, and I'll probably record this maybe over a few days because, as I say, um, you know, I'm not great with macro, so it might take me a little while. But I guess it's a learning for me, and it's it's probably you know, if, if you guys have never done it before, it's you can learn along with me and see what happens, and we'll see what the mistakes are, what the issues are. Um, I've done a little bit, you know, I've had a little go at it, but nothing really proper but I say I've not brought the long lens with me at all because I thought if I do I should just get tempted to get it out of the bag and have a go with it so I've left the long lens at home just brought the macro um, and we're going to see what we can find one of the things in macro is people always have this debate should you go tripod or should you go handheld um, there's two big debates on that what I've done is I've brought the actual monopod um, so a bit of, bit of both worlds I suppose, I've got a bit of stabilisation but I'm not really fixed in any one place so you know I think it might give me the best of both worlds we'll see what happens with that um, so yeah let's go and find see what we can find um, it's not warmed up a lot yet really so things aren't going to be very active so I'm hoping we're going to find some stuff um, but we just have to see and see how we get on so let's go have a look Macro photography is really tough. I mean, occasionally the wind gets up a little bit and everything starts to move around. You need everything perfectly still. The wind dropped again now, it's quite nice. I think the wind tends to get up a little bit when, uh, when the rain comes in. So the big issue with macro photography is the actual depth of field. You know, you're talking about the minutest range of depth of field, millimetres, you know, sometimes less than a millimetre. I mean, I'm trying to shoot these on, I don't know, F8 if I can. Light's not great, so, um, you know, I'm having to op probably stop down a little bit more than I'd like to. I'd like to open it up a bit more. But, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, and, and as soon as anything does move, you know, it's, it's really hard. So, so I'm trying different things. I'm trying manual focus with focus peaking on. So I can sort of rock the camera 
backwards and forwards and see if I can get a decent image as I go through the focal plane. Um, other thing I've tried is actually on autofocus. It doesn't seem to work too bad. You know, with autofocus, even if I'm moving around a little bit, the R5 is good enough on high speed shutter just to keep focusing constantly all the time. And probably you'll get one decent shot out of that. The other thing with macro is you can actually use what we call focus stacking. So this is taking various images at different focus points throughout the subject. And if the subject's quite large, I mean, I've just been photographing some snails, whether they've come out or not, I don't know. Um, but they're quite, quite wide. So you're never gonna get one macro shot to get the whole of the snail in. Uh, you can get details in certain areas, but you're not gonna get the whole of the snail in one go. So what I've tried to do is focus stack. So I'm moving the focus point, moving the camera to actually just arc through the focus points. So, you know, in some places we might get the head of the snail, sometimes we might get the shell of the snail. And hopefully if we stack those images together in Photoshop, we can get one sharp image of the snail. So we're gonna give that a go as well and see what happens. But I'm gonna keep trying, see what else I can get. There's no way with the monopod, I don't think, I'm gonna get video out of this. Not off, not off the R5, might do off the vlogging camera, but not off the R5. I think you know, video, you're just not gonna keep still enough without the tripod. The, the monopod's working quite well because I can move it backwards and forwards, get the focus point I want, so that's working quite well. But without a tripod, I don't think there's any way we're gonna get any video of anything. But yeah, great fun, bit of a challenge. Whether we do this in one day or every few days, I don't know, but let's go and see what else we can find. And it's training the eyes is the other thing, you know, it's. I'm used to looking for birds in the distance and animals and just saw a monk jack as I came down but obviously got not, not got the right lens on. But I'm used to looking at things further in the distance. I'm having to train my eye to look at very small areas and see some of these bugs are really tiny. So I'm trying to photograph these really tiny bugs and trying to find them in the first place. You know, you've really got to get down and have a look through the bushes and see what's there. Because nine times out of ten, you'll walk past it and you won't even see it. So you've really got to slow down, look for, look for those tiny little things in the, in, the, uh, in the bushes, little fly going across here, you know. Um, yeah, they're really not easy to see. So I'm going to train my eyes, slow down, concentrate on small areas and see what we can find. So one thing I'm really noticing with this macro photography is it's really time consuming. You know, I thought that waiting out in fields for wildlife to show up, waiting for birds, everything else, I thought that was quite time consuming. But this, if you're gonna do it properly, I think it's even more time consuming almost. You know, it's not just a case that you can see something, snap, and off you go to the next. Sometimes you can, but to get the right, I don't know, to get the right shape on the creature, to get the right background, to get the right lighting settings, everything else, it's not going to be easy. And what I'm learning so far is that unless you take that time it's not just the time to find the thing you know I mean walking around you don't see anything if you just sit in front of a an area where there's wildflowers other stuff around grasses then something will just appear in front of you you probably don't even know it's there as you're walking around but you'll see it while you sit there but I think done properly it can be a very rewarding and a very relaxing form of photography because there is so much around you you don't see and when you just sit there watch wait 
there's so many different bugs and insects around it's absolutely amazing so yeah we're going to take our time see if we can get some decent images what i think i might do as well is i mean the light's not great today but just really starting out today um certainly i'll bring a flash with me because i think a flash will one if the lighting is a bit low like it is today will help to illuminate the uh the subject and two if we come out on a brighter day then it will take away some of the shadows so we've got a, a flash unit and a bit of a, a diffuser for macro photography so we'll bring that out as well uh, and see what we can find so yeah it's not easy but it's going to be interesting learning so let's see how we get on Well, I reckon that's about it for this first day. We've got a few images, see how they come out. Um, certainly using the monopod is quite good because I think some of the areas where you're trying to get into the foliage amongst the insects and bugs, you tend to find that, you know, you, you, I don't think you'd get a tripod in there would be one of the things. The only positive thing with the tripod is potentially we might be able to get some decent video out of it. Um, but I'm going to try a bit harder to get some video, which I haven't got really today. And yeah, say so it's time consuming. I'm, I'm not going to wrap this up in one day. You know, the, it's yeah, just finding them, as I say, and just, you know, just spending some time photographing them. And that's what you've, re you've just slow down. That's, that's, that's the big lesson I've learned today. Slow down, sit quiet, just watch and wait. This rain's not helping today, I have to say. Um, although that, that sometimes brings out some nice things because you get the raindrops on things and stuff like that. So not sure if it's going to do the vlogging camera much good though. So whatever you're doing, have a great day. I'll catch up with you again soon. And I think we're going to be doing some more macro. Obviously, while it's a bit quiet, it's a good time to, to learn something new. Um, I'm certainly not very good at identifying bugs and things. So, but there is a guy a guy called JP who's really good at identifying this stuff. I'll put a link to his channel um, in the description below. Um, he, he knows his stuff. I, I've got no idea what the different bugs are or anything. I'm just going to photograph them and show you guys. But yeah, have a great day whatever you're doing. And I'll catch up with you again soon. Don't forget, if you like the video, please thumbs up for me would be great. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Um, it'd be great to have you on board as well with us. And I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye for now.